General Cherry. Nice to meet Dave. you, sir. Welcome. So Thank glad you. to have you here at Aviation Heritage Park. Well, that's the first question. Tell me about the uh, Aviation Heritage Park. Well, I'm so glad you're here to experience it firsthand. Uh, we've got some wonderful aviation artifacts here, and the thing that makes them really special is they tell real stories about real Kentuckians who have some sort of a connection to our community. These aren't just pieces of hardware that we found somewhere. These are part of people's lives. Our whole objective here is to be an educational institution so that we can keep these wonderful Kentucky stories alive forevermore and in so doing, become an inspiration to younger generations. And our park uh, began in 2009 when we had the ribbon cutting and the grand opening. And since then, people have flowed steadily in to hear these wonderful stories. Our park is designed to exhibit seven airplanes. At this point, we have three on display. Uh, my F-4 Phantom that I flew in Vietnam, we also have the F-9F Panther flown by Kentuckian Johnny Magda, who was leader of the Navy Blue Angels back in 1950. We're delighted to have an airplane painted in Blue Angel colors to honor him and to tell his wonderful story. He was truly a hero, the winner of the Navy Cross. Another airplane that we have on display here is the T-33 Shooting Star, and that's to honor four-star General Russell Doherty. Now, General Doherty was from Glasgow, Kentucky, uh, he graduated from Western Kentucky University and went on to become an Air Force four-star general and command the Strategic Air Command. So these are these wonderful stories that we don't want to see fall into obscurity. We want to keep them fresh for people, particularly young people, and hopefully be an inspiration to them to work hard and reach for their dreams. Then there is your story. General, you flew 295 combat missions. First of all, thank you very much for your service thank to the you, country. Thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, there's the plane over there, it's the F-4? The F-4 Phantom. Okay. It's the lead fighter, really the uh, premier fighter of the Vietnam War. I'd love to go take a closer look. Well, let's go, okay. let's go look. You know, you don't realize how big these things are till you're right next to them. It's a great airplane, Dave. Really Maybe. a wonderful machine. Now I see the star, the red star, MiG-21, 16th of April, 1972. 1972. I was a young fighter pilot flying combat in the uh, Vietnam War, flying out of Thailand. And that particular day, uh, I was a member of a flight of four of these airplanes, of F-4s. We intercepted a flight of four North Vietnamese MiG-21s. We had a very intense and extensive dogfight. And the end result was that all four of our airplanes came home safe and sound with two MiG-21 victories to our credit. Uh, I remember distinctly watching the MiG pilot eject from his airplane as, as my missile blew the wing off of, of his airplane. Mm -hmm. uh, his parachute blossomed right in front of me and I had to aggressively maneuver my airplane to keep from flying right through his parachute. But I had questions in my mind even that day uh, about this MiG pilot. Some of the personal things start to come to mind, like what was his name? Did he have a family? Where did he go to pilot training? All of these things. I never thought about it much for years and years. I just sort of put that on the back burner. But 36 years later, I was able to establish contact with him in Vietnam. He survived. He survived. Uh, I was able to go to Vietnam and meet him face to face on live national television, had dinner in his home, met his family. I'll never forget when the television anchor introduced him. It was very dramatic. He stepped out from behind a partition on the other side of the studio and came walking directly toward me. But I extended my hand and we grasped hands in a very firm handshake and he said, welcome to my country. I'm glad to see that you're in good health and I hope that we can be friends. And that's how our friendship started. Has he come here? He has. Well, on April 16th of 2009, Hong Mi was here, right here in Bowling Green, and helped us cut the ribbon on Aviation Heritage Park. It was a great experience. What an amazing story. And I hear that there's another plane coming to the park. We're very excited, Dave, to have our next exhibit, an F-111. And uh, the airplane is all restored, ready to be exhibited, and it's right here at the airport, not far away. I'd love for you to be able to see it. 
Colonel Franklin. Hello, Dave. Arnie Franklin. Nice to meet you. Welcome. Nice to meet you. Let me introduce you to Warhorse. This is your plane. Well, uh, I sort of have a, a close connection with this airplane. Colonel Franklin flew Warhorse twice while stationed at Lake and Heath Air Force Base in the 1980s. They met a third time when Colonel Franklin led a group of F-111s during the 1986 bombing raid on Libya ordered by President Reagan. Also notable is that War Horse flew 56 combat missions in 46 nights during Operation Desert Storm, more than any other F-111F. Aviation Heritage Park claimed her in 2012 from the Aerospace Maintenance and Regeneration Group at Davis Monthan Air Force Base in Arizona. As you can imagine, all of that time she sat out there in the desert, why uh, it, it, uh, it played havoc on the skin. But we started work on it and we sanded and we sanded and we sanded. I thought the airplane was big, but it's not big until you got a six inch palm sander in your hand and you start sanding it down. She has painted exactly the way she looked the day she launched on the Libya raid in 1986. And we've got the cockpits open. You're gonna show me. Absolutely, I'll be glad to show it to you. All right, wow. I could tell you're very passionate about this plane. Well, I am. Um, you know, we, uh, uh, you remember a lot and I can find myself sitting and just remembering uh, the, the, the good times that I had uh, flying this airplane. Um, it, it, it was just a tremendous honor. I flew uh, the F-111 a long time and uh, this cockpit looks exactly the way it did when I flew it that many years ago. Well, why don't we fire it up and go? I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> yeah.